things were really escalated at that point. One hand went around my neck. I had no idea how much time had passed. Two times I lost consciousness. I actually felt myself falling out of consciousness. I couldn't get air in or out. I thought I was going to die. I really thought I was going to die because he didn't want to hear me anymore. One time, uh, it was both hands, like this, around my neck. Um, and I, that was the time that I became unconscious. A couple months ago, I had a young female who was in an intimate relationship with a male. They had two children together. Things got physical. We got out there, and it was a pretty serious call, needless to say. And there were children involved as well. Um, there was a lot of soreness around the bottom part of my neck. I felt a lot of tenderness and soreness uh, on my, uh, near my vocal cords. Uh, it actually felt more internal than external. Um, it hurt to swallow. Um, my voice was pretty raspy. Strangulation does have the ability to carry on the signs and symptoms of it uh, days you know, later, so somebody might feel okay today after they've been strangled, but you know, two days later, you might start developing different symptoms. We're looking for um, if they have difficulty swallowing, tightness in their throat, if they have difficulty breathing, you know, blood clots forming from you know, cutting off the airway and cutting off the blood supply. Um, you can have you know, brain injury from that, just depending on if you had you know loss of consciousness you know just do a lot of damage that you don't realize at the time so we do a lot of extensive workups sometimes just depending on how you present when you come into the er so when i get a strangulation case i contact the the victim after reading through the report i just make sure there's no new injuries um, i then contact witnesses see if there's any witnesses that um, may have seen something that weren't contacted that night if they heard anything make sure that we have all the evidence together so that I can present it to the district attorney so that we can see if we can have charges on the individual, the suspect. I'd say strangulation is about 90% of my caseload. I'll meet with the victims of the strangulation, meet with witnesses, prepare the case, um, and put all the evidence together in order to get ready for a trial posture, something that works uh, for the victim and hopefully makes, makes him or her feel uh, like some measure of justice has been done as well. If we can't come to some kind of an agreement, then we'll try the case usually in front of a jury. My advice for victims who experience strangulation in a domestic partner situation would be um, to take that as seriously as you possibly can. This is a person who is much more capable of taking your life than you believe. It doesn't matter if you can't see the wounds, they're there. Talk to someone, get, get some help. There's, there are resources out there, even if you can't afford it monetarily, there are resources that, that are out there that you can get the help that you need. I lived with fear for several years. I finally got some help and, and now I have a piece that I, I can't put a number on or a price, so.